Let's get started. A 70 year, there's a story of a 70-year-old man. He loved to fish. He was retired, loved to go fishing. He's sitting in his boat one day fishing, and he hears a voice say, pick me up. He looks around. He can't see anyone, so he thought he's hearing. You know, maybe I'm starting to hear things. But he's sitting there in the silence, and he hears it again. Pick me up. So he looks over in the water, and there floating on a lily pad is a small frog. The man said, are you talking to me? The frog said, yes, I'm talking to you. Pick me up. Then kiss me. When you do, I'll turn into the most beautiful woman you have ever seen. I'll make sure that all your friends are envious and jealous because I will be your bride. The man looked at the the frog for a short time. He reached over, he picked it up carefully, and he placed it in his shirt pocket. The frog said, what are you doing? Didn't you hear what I said? I said, you have to kiss me in order for me to turn into your beautiful bride. He opened his pocket, looked at the frog, and said, Nah, at my age, I think I'd rather have the talking frog. (laughs) You you know, the older I get, I feel like my jokes are getting better. How many of you would agree with me? Just a couple. What is this? (laughs) Maybe they're going the other direction. I don't know. Um, Well, today we're going to be starting a brand new series that I'm calling Fool Proof. From one of my favorite books of the Bible, the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, if you don't know, is known as the book of wisdom. To me, it's one of the most practical books in the entire Bible that will help you with everyday living. Following the advice found in this one book, I promise you, will help you in your marriage it will help you at, in your job. It will help you in dealing with people in general. Just following the advice in this one book. It's phenomenal. Now, just a little background on this book uh, before we dive into it. Much of the book of Proverbs is written by a king by the name of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, not all of it, but most of it, in 1 Kings chapter 3, God comes to Solomon and tells him that he can ask for anything and God will grant it to him. We talked about that in a a series that we did towards the first of the year when when we did a message that was called Uncommon, if you remember that. We talked about this request that God made to King Solomon. So Solomon, as the king, He decides that he could have anything. Imagine if God would come to you and say, ask whatever you want and I'll do it, the creator of the universe. So this happens to Solomon, and of everything Solomon could have asked for, Solomon asks that God would give him wisdom to help govern the people as king. Well, God is so impressed by this request, he not only gives Solomon wisdom beyond any man that ever walked the earth, but God also blesses him with extreme wealth. In 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 12, this is what God says to Solomon. He says, behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I will give you a wise and discerning mind so that none like you has been before you and none like you shall arise after you. So God gives Solomon wisdom beyond the wisdom of any man, not only up to that point in history, but beyond the wisdom of any man that would come after him. Knowing this information, don't you think it might be a good idea to study what he had to say? This, after all, is the wisest man that God has ever created. So let's get started. Today we're going to lay a foundation And then in the weeks to come, I'm going to take you through some of my personal favorite Proverbs that have served me well over the years. They have served, just following the advice of uh, of this book of wisdom, these Proverbs, has saved me a lot of headaches throughout the years. Now, I just want to forewarn you, it's not always easy to apply these, but I guarantee you, if you do, it will help you in life greatly. So if you have your Bible or Bible app, go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 1. This is what we're going to use to lay the foundation here. I'm also going to have it on the screens if you would prefer to follow along there. Now before we get into this, I I just want to encourage you to do something for the next 
uh, next month or the next 31 days, starting tomorrow. I'm giving you a homework assignment, so to speak. There are 31 chapters in Proverbs, basically one for every day of the month. Make it a point, even if we're almost into May, if, even if you want to start the first of May, that's fine. Make it easy, chapter one, day one, chapter two, day two, you can do that as well. But I want you to make it a point over, over, the, over the course of a month, 31 days, to read one chapter out of the book of Proverbs every single day, just for 31 days. I've done this several times. I've read through this book several times, probably more than any other book of the Bible. As you read through it, I want to encourage you. The chapters are not that, not that long. Have a pen with you, maybe even a highlighter, and just start marking things up that jump out at you. Underlining, uh, underlining things, marking in your Bible, you're not altering it. You're just, you're just, there's been times I do this with, with my Bibles. I mark it up greatly. And then when I'm reading through it again, I'll see that maybe God had shown me something on a certain day that brings me back to memory, brings it back to memory or something like that. So I'd encourage you, something jumps out at you, highlight it, underline it. That's okay. And then every week, just one a week, find a proverb and memorize it. Just one a week. Just commit to memory one proverb a week. Find something that jumps out at you and memorize it. If you want to do more than that, go for it. But some of us, we never memorize any of the word of God, and I'm wanting to help you develop a good habit. David said, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. How do we hide the word of God in our heart? By memorizing it, and then it comes to memory when we're faced with a situation and we need to apply it. That's why it's so important. So memorize one a week. So that's only four scriptures over the next four weeks. Now that doesn't sound a lot, but if you get into that habit and you do that every week for a year, that's 52 scriptures that you have just memorized over the course of a year. And for some of you, I'd hate to say it, but that's more scripture than you have memorized in your entire life up to this point. After two years, you have 100 plus scriptures and so on. So this is a process. So that's your homework assignment this week. And then next week, I'm going to invite every one of you to come to the stage one by one and share your scripture. <laughs> nobody will show up next week we'll have three people in here <laughs> here we go proverbs chapter one, chapter nine verse one it says wisdom so we're talking about wisdom we're talking about two voices here first of all this is wisdom has built her house and she has hewn her seven pillars she has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Now listen to what wisdom is calling out. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and whoever reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Verse 11, for by me your days will be multiplied and years will be added to your life. So wisdom is telling us that following wisdom, your days will be multiplied, years will be added to your life. If you are wise, you are wise for yourself. If you scoff, you alone will bear it. Now verse 13, that's wisdom's voice. Next one, the, ver the, the, uh, the woman folly is loud. Now we're shifting gears and we're talking about folly. She is seductive and knows nothing. She sits at the door of, our, of her house. She takes a seat on the highest places of the town, calling to those who pass by, who are going straight on their way. Look at this, verse 16. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. Same thing that wisdom cries. And to him who lacks sense, uh, she says, stolen water is sweet, 
and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he does not know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of Shoal. I'm calling this message today, Wisdom's Call. Father, for the next few moments, I ask that you would give me the mind of Christ as we lay this very important foundation for this series. God, I'm believing today that these words will, as they go forth, Lord, and as you anoint them, they will touch and change the hearts of the listener. God, that when we leave this place, we would not leave this place the same, but instead we would be challenged by your word. And we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Here in Proverbs chapter 9, we see two things compared side by side. We just talked about them, wisdom and folly. Wisdom is defined as the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Folly is defined as the lack of good sense, foolishness. Now, if I went around this room and I asked you which one you would rather have, I think everybody would say I would prefer to have wisdom instead of folly. I don't want to be known as a fool. Now, these are polar opposites of each other, but we see here in this reading from Proverbs, they are doing the exact same thing. They are both calling out to us, trying to get our attention. It's important to understand this. Every one of us in this room, no one is exempt, we hear these two voices every single day. We hear folly crying out to us, and we hear wisdom crying out to us. Wisdom cries out and says, turn to me and live. Folly cries out to us and says, turn to me and fulfill your desires. Folly will end up destroying you, but that's not the message that folly tells you. You see, the voice of folly is appealing. The voice of folly will say things like, look how appealing this looks. Look how good this looks. This would be good for you. This would make you feel good. Just recently, there was a documentary released, and you might have seen it, called Hillsong, A Megachurch Exposed. Now, even though I thought it was interesting, I feel it's just another attempt of the enemy to discredit the work of God. So you've got to be careful with stuff like this. They brought in disgruntled people, if you've seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, to share their story, and of course, it's all bad. They never did mention, not once, the good that God has used that church to accomplish. For instance, the hundreds of worship songs that were produced and are sung nearly all over the world today. The leadership college they've established, they've trained thousands of, of people for full-time ministry. Did some of the leaders mess up? Yes, no doubt about it. But because of the actions of a small few, the entire church is now being dragged through the mud, especially by other Christians. Here's the thing that's always puzzled me about us Christians, and I can say this because I are one. (laughs) We work hard We work tirelessly to get those that are set that are that are set in sin set free, that are trapped in sin. And we rejoice and we celebrate when the people step from death to life and they accept Christ. But what I have realized is that when one of our own falls, and this isn't only true of leaders, it's true of those are the ones we hear about. When one of our own falls, when another Christian falls or fails, We feed them to the wolves. There is no mercy. There is no grace. We devour our own. And it's kind of embarrassing to me that we do this, but we do. Everybody on the planet, you need to understand this, has the voice of wisdom and the voice of folly trying to get our attention. I do too. The problem is folly is louder and it's more attractive. Much of that documentary on Hillsong talked about the fall of Carl Lentz. He was the pastor of the New York location. Lots of celebrities went to that church, including Justin Bieber. So obviously it made national headlines. Carl, if you've seen it or you know the story, he has an affair. He made a mistake. 
And it cost him everything. It cost him his career. It cost him his reputation. Completely destroys his family. Wisdom and folly were both shouting at him just like it does for all of us. But he, in a moment of weakness, chose to follow the voice of folly. Wisdom would say, stay away from that young lady that you're noticing in the park. That's what wisdom says. Wisdom is the voice that is shouting at you, stay away. Folly, on the other hand, is going to say things like, oh, come on, it's not that big of a deal to talk to that lady. After all, it's just an innocent conversation. Nobody is going to know. Folly tries to pull you in. It's subtle, but its mission is to destroy you. And that's why this message today, because I want you to be able to to distinguish between the two. Young people, listen to me. This applies to everybody, but if I would have known this when I was younger, it would have saved me many heartaches. This is one of the greatest battles that you will face in life, the battle of these two voices. You are going to hear them them both, but it's your decision on which one you follow. And when you follow one or you follow the other, you cannot blame it on anyone else or anything else. You cannot say that you follow the voice of folly because of your childhood or because of your job or because of your spouse. These are all excuses we like to make to cover up our bad choices. This is a choice each of us has to make and we have to make it daily. And this is a battle. The book of Proverbs in its entirety, is basically an instruction manual on how to pick the voice of wisdom because it is your choice. Choosing folly more often than not depends on what what you're doing is not going to get you kick you out of heaven, but it will, however, make your time on this earth much, much more difficult. Folly is going to constantly cry out, saying things to you like, it's no big deal. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's watching that. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's listening to that. Listen to me. Anytime you hear those words, it's a pretty good indication that you need to go the other direction will not direct you into the flow of the world. God's word, if you read it, you'll notice that it directs you against the flow of the world. And that's why this is so difficult. Maybe you're hanging out with some friends. They're trying to pressure you into doing something that will harm you. That is folly crying out. But on the other hand, you have this feeling inside of you that's telling you to say no. Stay away from that. Run from that. That is wisdom calling out. And this is a battle we all face. And the choice is yours. Let me illustrate this with a story. Right after God gives Solomon wisdom, that wisdom is instantly put to the test. Look at the story we see in 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 16. This is just phenomenal. Here's what it says. Sometime later, two prostitutes came to the king to have an argument settled. Please, my Lord, one of them began, this woman and I, we live in the same house. I gave birth to a baby while she was with me in the house. Three days later, this woman also had a baby. We were alone. There's only two of us in the house. But her baby died during the night because she rolled over on it. Then she got up in the night. She took my son from beside me while I was asleep. She laid her dead child in my arms, and she took mine to sleep beside her. And in the morning when I tried to nurse my son, he was dead. But when I looked more closely in the morning light, I saw that it wasn't my son at all. Then the other woman interrupted, it certainly was your son, and the living child is mine. No, the first woman said, the living child is mine, and the dead one is yours. And so they argued back and forth before the king. So we have a problem, it's he said, she said, but this is a major problem. Then the king said, let's get the facts straight. Both of you claim the living child is yours, and you say, and each says the dead child belongs to the other. Yes. All right. Look at the wisdom of Solomon. Bring me a sword. So a sword was brought to the king. Then he said, cut the living child in two, give one half to one woman, the other half to the other woman. 
pretty harsh. Then the woman who was the real mother of the living child, but this is why he did it, this was wisdom, who loved him very much cried out, Oh no, my Lord, give her the child. Please do not kill him. But the other woman said, All right, he will neither be yours nor mine, dividing between us. Then the king said, Do not kill the child, but give him to the woman who wants him to live, for she is his mother. When all Israel heard the king's decision, the people were in awe of the king, for they saw the wisdom God had given him for rendering justice. So we see the story of two women. These two women perfectly illustrate the challenges, but also the benefits of listening to the voice of wisdom versus listening to the voice of folly. The first woman shows us the true essence of of true wisdom. The second woman shows us the essence of following folly. Let's take a look at the first woman. She's the real mother of the child, which we see. In order to save her child, she has to make the choice, the difficult choice, to surrender him. She had to choose to give away something she loved dearly. In essence, she chose to give away her joy so her joy, so, so her child could experience joy. And this is why following the voice of wisdom is so hard for us. It's because more often than not, it will cost us something. You see this all throughout the Word of God. Jesus himself tells us the way we find our life is to lose it, to surrender it. The way we become great is to serve. The way to store up true riches in heaven is to give. You see completely opposite of what the world tells you to do. The principle of giving up what is important to you does not make sense to the world. But that's the voice of wisdom calling out. And as we walk through this series and we talk about different nuggets of wisdom, you're going to see how true this is. Young people, listen, if you're, if you're with a group of friends or you're with someone of the opposite sex and they're trying to get you to do something, to say no to that, that pure pressure, to say no to that is taking the risk of ending the friendship. It's taking a risk of ending the relationship. Saying no to that might get you made fun of. That's why this is so hard. Folly's cry is loud. But wisdom tells you to do what is right, even if that means a severed friendship. I guarantee you, if they sever the relationship over that, they were never really a true friend to begin with. They were not the person that God wants you to be with if it's a relationship. Here is what you need to understand. When this woman was willing to surrender something that was important to her, in this case her child, to follow wisdom's call, what did she receive? She received the blessings of God. She received the very thing she gave away and then some. When I was in high school, I dated a girl for a couple of years. How do I say it nicely? She was trouble. She's a pretty big flirt, and we were at odds more often than not. But we were together two years. This was my first real relationship. After we had split up, she called me one night, and I'll never forget the night. She called me one night and asked me to come over because she wanted to talk and she wanted to work things out. Now, folly, when, as I'm having this conversation, instantly goes to war with wisdom. And I remember this night very clearly. Folly was saying, just go and work it out. But I had this other voice, the voice of wisdom, and I understand this now, that was telling me she's not the one for you. You're going to have heartache if you stay with her, but it's your choice. You make the decision. I told her I would be right over and I hung up the phone. But as I hung up the phone, I sat on my couch and I kid you not, I wrestled with these two voices. And that night I decided to follow wisdom. I locked my door, I went to bed, and I never called her back after that day. I was done. I followed wisdom's cry that night. 
And years later, as I watched from a distance some of the choices that she was making, I realized that if I would have gone over to her house that night, we would have more than likely probably gotten married one day. Today I would be divorced. I would not be in ministry. I would not be standing before you today. I am convinced that one moment changed the entire course of my life, but it was my choice. I followed the voice of wisdom and I gave away something that I felt was important to me and years later, God honored that choice and he gave me something better. He gave me a wife that is honorable. He gave me a wife that is trustworthy. He gave me a wife of noble character. God gave me a wife that I don't deserve. This process make you cry. God bless you. <laughs> This process reminds me of this picture. You've probably seen it. If we could get it up there. It's where Jesus was with the big bear behind his back. The little girl's got the smaller bear. And she says, but I love it, God. And he says, just trust me. I've got something better for you. You see, I need you to understand that God has something better in store for us. But a lot of times in order to receive it, we have to surrender what's in our hands first. And some of you have been hanging around with people that have been keeping you on a path that you should not be on. You are afraid of losing the friendship. You are afraid of being lonely. But God is saying, trust me, following wisdom's call will cost you something. But I promise you, the blessings of God that flow to those that choose, they, they will flow to those who choose wisdom's call. And what he blesses you with in return will be of far greater value than what you surrendered in the first place. And some of you need to understand that today. Maybe you're dating someone right now and you know they're not good for you. But you fear loneliness. Wisdom's call is telling you to get out. Folly is telling you to stay. I guarantee you if you surrender and you follow wisdom's call and you go hard after God, and you wait on Him. Now, that's the, that's the key. That's the hard part, the waiting, because sometimes we give things up, and we want to turn over here and get it right away. And God says, no, I need you to wait. You'll find one day that God actually has something much better for you. Someone that will love you, and someone that will treat you the way you deserve to be treated. You see, the first, wisdom, the first woman is an example to us all on following wisdom's call. The second woman is an example to us on following the call of folly. Folly will make you think that you are gaining the very thing you seek, but the reality is the path of folly will cause you to lose the very thing you're trying to hold tightly onto. In that relationship I just told you about when I was young, if I would have listened to folly and tightened my grip, I would have lost, I would have lost what I was trying to hold on to, but there would have been a path of destruction that followed. Who knows where I would be today? Following wisdom is not an easy path, but it's the right path. Folly will lead you to destruction every time. But even with that said, here's the sad, here's the sad truth. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 11. Strong, strong, strong scripture. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his foolishness. It's pretty strong words, but listen to me. Years ago, there was a, a retired NASA engineer by the name of Edgar C. Wisenant. Maybe you've heard of him. He wrote a book called 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Be in 1988. This book, which he self-published, placed the expected date of the rapture between September 11th and September 13th of 1988, and it became a massive bestseller. By the time the end of the year was reached, more than 4.5 million copies of this book had been sold. Imagine if he just got a buck apiece for him. Wisenant was certain he had the date right. As a matter of fact, he said, only if, his, if the Bible is in error... Am I wrong? And I say that to every preacher in town. I would stake my life on it. Well, that day came and went, and here we are. Now, you would think that he would apologize, he would repent, he would learn from his folly, but no. Scripture says that just as the dog returns to its vomit, a fool will repeat its foolishness. 
He went on to write, to write more books predicting the rapture in 1989, 1993, 1994. Well, as you can imagine, those books didn't sell as well. But nonetheless, he kept producing them. He kept making predictions despite the clear teaching of Scripture that we will not know the date and time of Christ's return. But people kept buying the books. I'm thinking maybe I should go into the book writing business. Good night. We could pay off the debt of the church. I could just, just write something kind of out there and, and sell things and people buy anything, I think. But here's the truth. Because we're all human... We're all going to make mistakes. You can't avoid that. Every one of us in this room has listened to the voice of folly before, and more than likely, every one of, this, of, us, of us in this room someday soon will follow the voice of folly again. It's, it's going to happen. But if you get nothing else from this message, this is what I want you to get. The one thing that sets the wise person apart from the foolish person is the fact that the foolish person will continue to make the same mistake over and over and over again. This person, the fool, they don't learn from their mistakes. No matter how painful their experiences might be, this is why you'll see some people get arrested for the same thing time and time again. This is why you'll see some people mess up a marriage, they'll get remarried, and they'll continue to make the same mistakes they made in their previous marriage. It's said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting to get a different result. Well, I suppose insanity would fit the bill there, but according to the Word of God, that person that does that is a fool. But they don't have to be. The path of the fool is a choice. Just like the path of the wise is a choice. You can't change the past. If you followed the voice of folly before, you can't change that. That's in the past. You cannot change the mistakes you made yesterday, but you can choose not to make the same mistakes today. And that's the key. Are you going to keep returning to the voice of folly? There are two voices shouting at all of us. The voice of wisdom, the voice of folly. Which one will you follow? It's your choice. It's your choice. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. For the simple are killed by their turning away, and the complacency of fools, fools destroys them. This is wisdom. Whoever listens to me, wisdom, will dwell secure. Watch the promise of walking in wisdom, following the voice of wisdom will dwell secure and will be at ease without dread of disaster. If you choose to follow the voice of wisdom, we are told here in Proverbs that we will have peace. It says that we will be at ease without dread of disaster. That's peace. Here is what James tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 5. He says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. Did you know that? You're faced with a tough situation. You hear those voices, God, I need wisdom. What should I do? The word of God says we can ask him and he, he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. This is why God was so impressed with Solomon. He asked for wisdom. He wants you to ask for his wisdom. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as the wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. I want to challenge you, pay close attention to these two voices. You will probably hear them and distinguish them this afternoon, because they're always talking. Ask God to help you discern these two voices. We're told if we need wisdom, we should ask. It's really that simple. Do you know how many times I've asked God for wisdom? I have to ask daily because I really have no clue what I'm doing. Don't say amen to that. I close with this. Many people have told me how thankful they are with the way we as a church navigated through COVID. We are stronger today and we're more united today as a church than we were prior to COVID. And that's not the norm. Several churches have closed. Many are still not even 50% of the attendance they had before. We have more than doubled. 
But I will be the first to tell you, the voice of folly, just like it was for all of us, was extremely loud over those months that we all walked through. I, just like everyone else, had no clue what to do. No pastor alive had experienced that before. There was no book written to go and figure out what to do. The voice of folly was trying to get our focus on the things of the world instead of the things of God. There were people mad at me. There were people that left this church because I would not give my opinion on certain issues. And the voice of the folly, when that was happening, the voice of folly was screaming loudly. And it would have been so much easier to just fall in line with the voice of the world. But now I sit back and I see how much damage that would have caused. So in order to navigate those waters, I had to do exactly what James instructs us to do. I had to ask God for wisdom. God, I need help. I don't know what to do. This is your church. These are your people. If you don't help me, this is this ship is going down. And two words I got from God during that season. Focus, unity. I felt like God told me with everything inside of me. I felt like he said, I need you to stay focused on me and my work. And I need you to stay united. So if you remember, I hit those subjects hard and I hit them in different ways over and over again. You probably got sick of hearing it. The day the guest got up here and he went off about the masks, I thought we were going to have a church split over that. I had no clue what to do. So I asked God for wisdom again. He said, get up there and tell the people to get their eyes off of the masks and get their eyes back on me. So I got up here the following week and I preached focus and unity again. And that made some people mad. They wanted me to get up here and roll right along with the nonsense. You see, following the voice of wisdom at that time, it came at a cost for me. It came at a dear cost for me. We lost some very good friends, people that left because I would not share my opinion. It cost me. But as I stand up here today, just look at what God has done. He had something better hidden behind his back, but in order to receive it, I had to surrender my will to him. I had to surrender to the call of wisdom. I want to tell you, if you need God's wisdom about something, just ask him for it. You don't have to come to me and ask me. We all have direct connection with God. You can go to God yourself and say, God, I need wisdom. Here's the thing. You might not like what you hear. And that's why it says don't waver. Because we really want God to say this. But when we ask for wisdom, because that voice of folly is loud, it'll, it'll look appealing. It'll look like the right path. But then you'll get this check in your spirit. That's what happens to me. I get this check. No, no, no. Don't, don't go that way. Don't go that way. It's that still small voice. It's not a loud, boom, booming voice from heaven. That's what I wish it was. It's that, it's that still, small voice. It's a check. And when I start going this way, I start feeling, it's like, it's like a piece of sandpaper in your gut, so to speak. That's what it's like for me. That might help some of you. You just, oh, that's wrong. Even though it looks right going this way, I feel like it's wrong. That's the voice of wisdom trying to crawl, cry out at you, don't go that way, don't go that way, don't go that way. You might not see the benefit of following wisdom's call at first. I didn't when we were in COVID. I didn't see the benefit of that. I'm like, man, we're losing people I love and am I making the right call? But I promise you, if you follow the voice of wisdom, you will not regret it. God has something for you that is greater than you could ever think or ever imagine. I'm gonna have you bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm gonna, Sam, if you could go ahead and come on back up at this time. Father, we just want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you, God, for this opportunity to dig into this book and to, to learn this very practical truth from your word. God, I believe that there's, I, I know all of us in here have followed the voice of folly from time to time. But God, is my prayer today that when we leave this place, we would turn from that voice 
Maybe some of us need to end a relationship that we, the, the, the person's dragging us down. They're dragging us away from you. Maybe it's a friendship. Maybe it's a group of friends that we hang around that have been taking us down the path of folly. God, I just, I pray, Lord, right now that the eyes would be opened of your people and they would clearly see that. They'd clearly see the fight and the battle between these two voices today. God, for those, of, those that need wisdom in this place, I just stand in the gap for them right now. Maybe they're facing a tough family situation or a tough, they're facing a, a job situation. They need to make a decision about a job or maybe it's something in their health or whatever it might be. God, I, just, I pray for them today. If anyone in this room, anyone watching online needs wisdom, God, I ask that you would give it to them. God, I pray that you would speak clearly to them. If, they're, if they have a spouse, I believe, God, the two shall become one. I believe that the husband and wife will be in agreement when they're walking in wisdom. So, God, I just want to thank you. We thank you, God, that you promise to us to give us wisdom in difficult situations in life. And so, God, we receive that today. And we thank you for wisdom. We thank you for wisdom, God. In Jesus' name. Now, I want you to keep your head bowed and your eyes closed.